Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to talk about hemorrhagic or hypovolemic shock. And we're going to discuss the actual problem, the physiologic problem, the causes, expected changes in a variety of parameters that you can already see written here on the left, and what we can do about it. My goal for this and all of the shock videos is to ensure that you, the viewer, understands the base concept, really the base problem, and recognize the compensation that the body tries to do. That way you don't need to actually memorize these parameters, but rather about you can think about them relatively easy and make sense of it. So I've drawn the diagram I'll use for all of my shock videos here. We have the heart, we have the arterial system which gets blood to the tissue, we have the venous system which returns blood from the tissue to the heart, and then we have our nervous system which innervates the whole thing. Now the problem in hypovolemic shock is really here and here in that your overall blood volume is greatly decreased. As a result, there's a decreased preload to the heart and your cardiac output goes down as a function of decreased stroke volume. So initially, your ejection fraction actually goes up because as your blood pressure drops, it makes it easier for your heart to push more blood out to the body. Meanwhile, your baroreceptors recognize a drop in blood pressure and your heart rate goes up in an attempt to rectify this. But again, because our total blood volume is down, our cardiac output in total also goes down. So again, total blood pressure drops, so your ejection fraction can actually increase to begin with, but your heart rate then goes up to compensate for the dropped blood pressure, and your total cardiac output as a whole goes down. Always remember for all of these, cardiac output is equal to heart rate times stroke volume. And as your stroke volume goes down as a function of your decreased total blood volume, your heart rate has to then go up to compensate in order to keep your cardiac output constant. And that's what's happening here. A lack of intravascular volume leads to a drop in both our central venous pressure as well as our left atrial capillary wedge pressure because there just isn't much volume in them anymore. And again, in order to try and compensate and deal with this decreased blood volume, our blood vessels constrict, leading to an increased systemic vascular resistance. I know it's a while back, but resistance is equal to our resistivity times the length of our tubing over the geometric cross-sectional area. And so what our blood vessels do is they constrict in order to decrease the overall area, which then leads to an increase in resistance. And that's why our SVR goes up when we vasoconstrict. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of this stuff real quick. And the next thing we're going to talk about for this is signs and symptoms. So aside from those symptoms that are common to all shocks, uh, the obvious ones in these patients is sometimes they'll be bleeding, causing their hypovolemia, so patients who are trauma, let's say, um, or they may not be bleeding so obviously, say into a cavity, a pelvis, chest, etc. Uh, they'll often appear dry, so dry mucous membranes, sunken eyes, things like that, and lab work may reveal a low hematocrit if they actually are bleeding, or they can have concentrated electrolytes as a result of fluid loss. Next part of this is our treatment. And our treatment depends on the underlying cause. If the patient is bleeding, we need to stop the bleeding. And of course, replace the lost blood. If it's a function of severe hypovolemia, as is the case sometimes with diarrhea, dehydration, DKA, etc., then fluid replacement is the answer. Fluid replacement. All the while supporting them with pressors as needed. So that's really it for hypovolemic shock. I hope this was clear and simple. It's important to understand that once you know what the primary problem is, you can kind of explore the ways that the body is going to try to compensate for that problem. And that's really the way you should think about your shock states. 
As always, if you have any questions or concerns or are interested in getting involved, please feel free to contact us, subscribe below, follow us on Instagram for daily content, and stay tuned for the next video.